I, I generally don't want to know anything because I find that it's very easy to get sucked into the elements. Who's directing, who's in it, how much they're paying. If I don't respond to the story, if I don't think it's a story that I should do, no matter how good the part is, then I try to not go near it because I probably shouldn't do it. I read that one of the unfulfilled ambitions of your life is to do a song and dance show. I, I heard you sing on Saturday Night Live. I understand you're something of a dancer. Uh, well, the truth is, we'd sort of like to be the judge of that. Would you care to, would, would you care to demonstrate? Meryl Streep did. And Meryl Streep did it. Did. Well, he says Meryl Streep did it. Oh, well, I, I haven't done this in a very long time, but I, I, I took a tap when I was a kid. ended with a perfect pirouette. <laughs> it did. We've had three occasions to talk about albino alligator on this stage. When Matt Dillon was here, when Faye Dunaway was here, and when Gary Sinise was here. All three praised its direction and its director, and now we can find out why. What led you to decide that it was time for Kevin Spacey to direct a film? I think um, because I've been the kind of actor who I, I've always seen the whole thing. I've, I've, ne I've never been an actor who sees it through the narrow lens of just the part. So I think I was just sort of eager to discover what it would be like to be the storyteller. How much freedom do you give your actors as a director? Um, I, I believe in a lot of freedom, but I also believe that if, you're, if, if it's structured correctly and if you know what you're trying to go for, um, then you can be free enough to go anywhere, and that's when the magic can happen. Um, if you're unsure and you're unsteady, and, uh, and if actors are working from a basis of fear, um, then you get a kind of quasi-neurotic instinct. Um, but precision and end decision um, are very important to me. So I, it was something that I, um, I, I demanded of everybody that they be absolutely precise about what was going on with them in each scene. And once, you're, once you have a foundation, um, then it's fantastic where you can go when, when, when actors feel confident. Yes. Now, Kevin, either you have excellent taste in choosing films or films have excellent taste in choosing Kevin Spacey. How did you come to L.A.? Confidential. Um, um, there was a director, uh, Curtis Hansen, who had been trying for years and years and years to get me cast in films he made, and the studio always rejected me. So uh, I got a phone call after the Academy Awards, um, and Curtis said, I think I got the role. And I think they're not going to say no this time. Um, he and I met uh, the next evening at the Formosa Cafe, which is where the Lana Turner scene happens in the movie. Right. And uh, I asked him a question, which was really the, I think the thing that made me, sold me on it. I asked him if it was really 1952, and you were really making this movie, who would you cast as Jack Vincent? And he said, Dean Martin. Ooh. And I looked up, and in the Formosa Cafe, it's just lined with eight by 10 black and white pictures of movie stars forever. And Dean Martin was right here. Now, to this day, I don't know whether he sat us in that booth on purpose, but there was Dino looking down at me. And uh, I then watched Some Came Running in Rio Bravo. And I realized that in both of those films, he plays characters that are on the surface. Very slick, very ring-a-ding, very cool, everything's together. And yet, just underneath that is something deeply unsatisfying. Uh, and both those performances are very good. So I understood what he meant by that. And, 
And then we went out and, and got, you know, Dean Martin's clothes. <laughs> Did you really? Got a little ring-a-ding going. Am I correct in saying that more than other actors, it strikes me that this is an odd word to use. You often insinuate when you act, insinuate things about your character. It's a very, very subtle thing that you do sometimes. Am I wrong in using that word for you? No, because I trust the, I trust the visual and, I, and I, trust a, I trust what a look or a thought can do. Uh, very often more than I trust dialogue. Very often I think there's too much words in film. I, I trust what that character is experiencing internally. And that was, a, that was a role that was challenging because all the experiences that he goes through are quiet ones, are silent ones. There's no great epiphany. There's no epiphany, but on the other hand, um, in that picture you realize every actor's dream, which is a great death scene. <laughs> I, I, I just was, con I was convinced, and, and, and ultimately uh, uh, everyone was, uh, that um, the quieter it was, uh, the more uh, 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 out of the blue and un un undramatic in a way. After covering every role in the theater production of Hurley Burley, it must have come as no surprise when you were asked to reprise one of the roles in the film. I would like you to just say a word, please, about the difference between acting a role on the stage and playing a role in the movie. Is there any difference for you at all? None. None. There is no difference to me. It's. It's about finding what the writer wanted you to, to feel and experience and making sure that you get that across.